Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. I'm gonna do a video for you. It is uh, just about October 2020. Uh, we're still in COVID. Um, the video that I would express to you is gonna be about, for my SEO guy, um, if my house is, lights are flickering everywhere. I used to say a lot of videos in the past were just based on maybe one or two legs coming in the home or the neutral having an issue. This one today is pretty interesting. Um, the wires that were coming in the back of this wall, I'll just give an example. They had like three of them tied under one wire nut and going under one circuit and then another one going doubled up on that circuit. I had four circuits under one breaker. So if you have too many things in the house tied together, such as why the dishwasher was tied to downstairs in the bathroom, and then to the garage, and then to the other area of the home, I was like really having a hard time understanding tracing this. Then there was another two wires that were tied together here too, and put on one breaker. So I needed five breaker spots. So I'll show you, before you assume, again this video is for other electricians, because homeowners, if you can't, if you figure this out, good luck. <laughs> but it's pretty tricky. So, right here, first of all we had a you can move back. A breaker here that was in the wrong spot. Uh, the AC just got wired, said 35 amp max. So you can put a, you can go up one size, put a 40 amp in, but it was down on a 30 and that's not good. Dryer was a 40, so we put a 30, but it was a full. So once I put in um, a kind of a, a tandem here, um, I was able to put in two half Slim Jims and then I was also able to add another Slim Jim and then remove over here one and then put in two more Slim Jims. So I was able then to trace the whole house appropriately. And these are dead spots. If you pull the cover, uh, and I'm not gonna pull the cover because I don't have my safety glasses and I don't need you people getting upset about it. So, but right here is two dead spots in the bus bar. So it looks like that there's space when you call up and say, I think I want to get a hot tub, and there's really not. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, that's how the wires come in. Now, we put in a slip conduit for him a month ago, and he's going to have to upgrade with this kitchen remodel because I cannot get any arc faults in. So next year, he's going to upgrade this. I'm going to pull a permit on this and then do a full uh, larger panel side-by-side, -side, build it out with strut. And then we might have to knock out some bricks here um, and then put the panel right on it. Because it can't be higher than six, seven with um, the new breakers. And some of my new panels are pretty tall. This will have to be bypass lever. He's getting the concrete actually chipped out by my concrete guy that did my patio. So I'll probably have to go all that way and drive two ground rods around the corner. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'll have to drive one by the AC, one here, and then just hammer drill against the brick and run out my number six next year. Um, so, anyways, again, if you, if that's a very, very odd service call, maybe one out of 50 would even have something like that. But today it dawned on me <clears throat> as I was tracing the house, I should have looked at that first. And I did trace the whole house. Why? because I had a lot of junctions for this kitchen. So, um, anyways, uh, the last part of this, I guess my SEO guy could be also label it as a kitchen remodel, whatever. But a lot of people call up and say, hey, I just got one wall. I just, huh, right. And then there was just, just a soffit. So all of these wires just went like this. Right, and so they had to go through the top header plate. So they were too short. So we had to cut them and we put them up high. Uh, the insulation, he's gonna do batted and keep it away from there. We have pictures. I did make a drawing that he can leave in the panel. Um, where'd you put that paper? Here. And so if any other guy has to trace this, he can laminate it and we can definitely, we're gonna, laminate this for me but we're going to stick it in the panel and then um this is our map so any guy that needs to see it knows that we have junctions in the ceiling that one's a little tight um yes you can still get to it if you had to 
but you're not going to have to. I mean, if the splice is really well and traced it. And then right there is a second one, and right there is a third one. And they're labeled with what circuits. Now, the reason why I did that is because next year, when I change the panel, all those circuits are obsolete. Because my new panels don't have halves. There'll be more full arc faults. And so I will have to go through this and label out that dishwasher circuit 16 now. And this map will have to stay in that panel laminated so the next guy coming up goes, oh, 16 was a 1A. But I doubt you'll have to get up there. There's one other junction up there pretty high. You don't have to show up close. But that is gonna be the second junction there that you can get to. Um, and sure, I'd like to have had that in a little bit different area, but by the time I, I cut that wire to pull it up and to pull it back, I had still had to make a fairly good loop because you don't realize how short that is getting in there. And so coming out of here, 7B was the same thing, which is the outside plug in the bathroom receptacle. And 1B also had the same issue. Now, he didn't give me a pony wall, but he's gonna cut underneath the cabinet. This is the dishwasher. This is a trash can slide. And so we're gonna put an outlet in the side right here to meet Coda Pot. And then over here, this will meet the code for coming around this corner. This in here is going to be a cabinet that someone's going to put, they're going to put pots in, okay? This is our dishwasher. This right here could have done the same cabinet, but they were just going to blank it off. And I said, don't. Build me a custom door so I can get through here and put in a transformer. This is going to be for my LED lighting. This right here is just going to be a plug in case he wants to plug something in and charge. And that one's a splice to extend the dishwasher, which was right there. So coming out of here, these are my 12 volt LED lives. He's going to give me some oak shelves. He's going to plane them himself or do glass. But we're going to get some LED strips that are only, well, we'll buy a 10 footer and have to cut and throw it off. But we'll have to buy four kits. And this is going to be my wires feeding that. And then again here, he's probably gonna have just a short shelf so he can pull this back. But the, the goal is to get it out here where he knows he's starting the shelf. And then I'll butt splice those. These are 12 volts. So we'll have two shelves open, no cabinets, but they'll be LED lit. Transformers accessible to get to. And plus he can just put some other stuff in here. You know, China pots and pans, dishes, stuff he doesn't really touch as much, but he needs more shelf space. Over here was the range, or excuse me, it was a wall oven. That wall oven, guys, a good trick of the tree is to turn that into a three wire instead of four. And he didn't have a microwave circuit, and now he does. Because I turned that into from a three wire SE, and I took that red and, and taped it white. And I have a bare naked aluminum, and I put Alumicons in there, and then I have my black. And so now I got to go to an outlet and do a microwave. And it's just a slide in. So they're probably 1,000 watt, not 1,800. This now is all going to be total shelves, two 30-inch cabinets right here, and a full fridge. So you're supposed to have two 20-amp circuits serving the kitchen. Well, with the dining there and a the nook there, you should have three or four. I will have four. I will have these two as a circuit, this as a circuit, uh, this as a circuit to there, and then I have 3A come around for circuit, 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 and then I have 3B coming around. Now, over here, she's having drawers all the way up, so I can't put a plug on the end of that peninsula because of the drawers. So I'm putting it right here, but they are making a fairly long overhang. Some inspectors get pretty upset about the fact that you can only have a six inch lip. Bottom line, it's either that or they're gonna drill granite, put a pop-up plug, but that then they gotta abandon that top drawer. So when you're trying to go to this concept of having a whole slab across, you have to keep in mind that you may not be able to do three drawers. Well, she didn't check with me, she just ordered them. What do I do? Bottom line, I can't put it there. Otherwise, they need to build me a pony wall here to put an outlet in. 
but we did put it here around the corner to plug stuff in. It is a 20 amp 12 gauge circuit here. The range is here, instead of up high, it's now down low with a new two gain smart box. And then over here, mind you, this one's lower, but you have a six foot rule to meet all the way 612. So you still have to have one down there that matches the height over there, just so it looks nice. Last but not least is the vent hood. This can still be on a lighting circuit, which it is, 12A that goes that way to the living room. So next year when he decides to change a panel, we're gonna to need to arc fault because look how many circuits that we've touched. A lot. I don't have to arc fault 240 volt circuits, but I do have to arc fault pretty much most of these. So it's gonna be like 10 of them. I won't GFI dual function protect it because I'm already gonna insert my GFIs. This one will serve here and this will slave. I'll insert one here, which will slave from here to there to there. I'll insert one on this GFI here to slave there. And then I'll insert a GFI on this one by itself. Could I do a dual function receptacle arc fault GFI? Yes, I could. But I prefer to protect in the panel the whole way. Funny thing is, is that what's great about the new code is that a lot of people have a budget. And a lot of kitchens they call me on. They don't have the money for a service change. I'm not gonna speak price on it, call me, because every time I do, I get slammed from some bad, I won't say it rude, but some guy in Tennessee. So the bottom line is that you have to sometimes upgrade that service. He will, <clears throat> that's a GE Slim Jim panel. I don't like him. And the funny thing about it is some jackweed got me reported to Dora that I arced a GE Slim Jim in there with an arc fault on a GE breaker. You know what? I accidentally touched a wire in here thinking it was right, but the whole house had to be traced and we were working on that and it still, it still just bumped the yoke of the strap and it tripped. Guess what happened? It tripped the main. It didn't even trip the breaker it was slaving to. That's how much I trust some of these Slim Jims. So if you look up article 240.87 under uh, a soft arcing, soft arc fault. It's not arc fault like 210.12, but if you look that up, that flash point, they only really do that for breakers that are gonna be 600 volts or 480 volt and higher or 1200 amps and higher. But my point was is that if we say FPE and Zinsko and Gould and Murray and Bulldog and Eddie Bass screw infuses, all of these are bad breakers that never got their UL listing or they they bounce really hard and they don't even trip. They can pretty much create molten lava out of it. My point is, is that if some of these other bigger brands still act like that, then why aren't those obsolete? I'm a Siemens guy. I normally don't try to talk big box store names or lighting stores or even breaker companies to offend anyone. But in my own personal opinion, I'm a Siemens and a square D person. Square D, I'm having a hard time right now um, getting some certain breakers for remodel because of COVID. Siemens, I'm not, but I've always been a Siemens guy. So the bottom line is, is that arc faults are supposed to create from arcing. And if you look at 110.14C and it states in there on certain breaker types, on what gauge of wire and how to splice and what type of wire, what type of conducting material for copper, aluminum, copper clad, aluminum, aluminum, copper clad, all of these different types and how to splice it, well, you'll see right then and there that the breakers aren't always tripping. So the guy that did turn me into Dora, and I got to deal with that, I still have a valid point. Look, if you're scared and, and something arcs, don't be an electrician. If you're scared of anything blowing up or you're getting electrocuted, don't try to be an electrician homeowner. Just because you do a kitchen on your own and pass an inspection does not make you a professional. It just makes you a residential wireman of your home for one job in one area of your home. So I do preach safety first always. I've always been safe with gloves. This one video I did not have a glove on, although I do have to state, that's still my point. I don't trust some of these Slim Jims. And if they can't be trusted and it trips a main before, I mean, how much impedance do I have to go from this tripping to that panel right where all those wires going through that nipple? What is that? 25 foot of wire? That's ridiculous.
God should have tripped that breaker for itself by itself. Some of them were new in that panel because I put them in and some were old. So my point is, is that you might have to actually invest in a service change. And when you look at a service change, I have tons of videos on this. You cannot just do your panel. In Northern Colorado, and I don't give a shit where you guys are in other states. In Northern Colorado, you have to change this out to be a bypass lever, different meter box, put in your slip conduit, put in a new panel, bond your nipples, put down, and do two eight foot ground rods, inner system bonding bridge wire, and better make sure your cold water's bonded, and your CSST gas pipe. So right there, you're in a whole code article of 250. And then Loveland or Excel or Fort Collins Power, where I work, REA, United Power don't deal with this much. They get to tell you how much juice is really coming into this wire here and if you are allowed to touch it. Now, if you're going to repour like Carson is going to repour here, make sure you put a sponge around this. Some kind of spongy material that it'll flex. Some people do um, one of those floaty devices, okay? Um, other people will just get some material from Home Depot, but put it right around here so it'll slip. Yes, this has a slip sleeve, but you don't want it pulling the conduit and yanking wires against the jaw in here. Because when, they, when we put this in last month, one wire was pushing so hard against the jaw, it was piercing into that conductor and about to actually ground to the whole meter can. And there's not any fault protection going backwards. So anyways, guys, um, yeah, make a map, laminate it, put it there. That way the guy knows there's splices in the attic. Try to get them as high as you can. He is gonna keep away from that area so we can see those later. Yes, I can crawl in there. Yes, it would be tight. But not like I've never done that with wood before. Personally, I like to have those way back over here but I'd have to rewire the whole entire panel. A little tricky to do when I've already been here a 12 hour a day just trying to get a kitchen remodel for just a wall being cut out and just a soffit. Well, we didn't just take out this soffit because there was probably stuff in there as well, as well as you can see how tight these wires are. So they, did, they kind of said no, plus this is gonna be more of a structural wall and this part was not. So that's why they cut it down, gave an open concept, big slab, range, sink, disposal, dishwasher, fridge, cabinet space. No. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. I hope I helped you out. Have a good one.